There's been a lot of news going around recently bringing to light the amount of private information we store online and who has access to view that information. Let's see what they're collecting and aside from donning a tinfoil hat, what we can do about it. The first question to ask is, why would someone want to track me? Well, to companies, your information equals big bucks. Email addresses for spam, physical addresses to send product information, phone numbers for telemarketing, and web browsing habits to target banner ads. The more they know, the more they can bombard you with personalized advertisements. To other entities, such as governments and other governing bodies, they're more like overprotective parents. They want to know what you're doing so that they can make sure you're not getting into trouble and to punish you if you do. While these aren't all necessarily bad things, the underlying issue is that we don't have a choice as to what is being collected about us. There's no way to turn it off. Basically, anything you put on the internet is subject to being collected. So what options do we have to combat this? Well, let's look at some of the different tracking methods, starting with website tracking. If you've ever been to a website and seen a tweet this, like this, or plus one this button, you can rest assured that the social networking site behind those buttons probably know that you're visiting that site. Even if you haven't logged into any social networking sites, websites can still track your IP address, which is the unique number that is assigned to everyone's individual internet connection. This is known as metadata. They can log your IP address, what sites you visited, cross-reference that with other websites that you visit to reveal your browsing history. And for all intents and purposes, this data is anonymous, but as you can see, they don't need your personal information to know your online activity. Now there's three steps that you can do to combat this. First install Ghostery, which will tell you what methods each site employs to track you. Second, enable your browser's do not track feature in your privacy settings. This posts a message to each website telling them to turn off all third-party trackers. Lastly, download a good tracker blocking program such as Abine's Do Not Track Me application, which blocks most tracking methods. Aside from tracking your activity on other websites, social networks inherently use your personal information to sell to advertisers. And the worst part is, is that we voluntarily give them this information. So what we need to do is make sure they're using our data to our specifications by reviewing their privacy settings and make sure that we understand them and have them set appropriately. Not only that, but be conscious of what you share with these websites. If you have private information that needs to remain private, don't post it on a social networking site. It's also not a bad idea to mix up your online identities. Use your real contact information only if you have to. Otherwise, you can do things like generate temporary email addresses to hide your email address or generate fake burner phone numbers to hide your phone number. Speaking of email addresses, whether you use Gmail, Outlook, Yahoo, or any other webmail client, your emails are stored on their servers, making it their property, and therefore they have the right to use it however they please. The only way to ensure your email contents remain private is to encrypt the messages. Encrypting means you encode the message to unreadable characters, send it along so that no one peeking along the way can recognize it, and then the person on the other end can decode those characters to reveal the message. A simple way of doing this through webmail is by using a browser plugin called Mailvelope which gives encryption options to all the major webmail providers. But the biggest source of data leakage by far is your internet service provider. The fact that you're connected to the internet means that some company is providing you that connection as a service, which means that everything that you do online goes through them first, so they can see everything and can do whatever they want with it. That's frightening if you think about it but there's one way that you can evade them. It's called a virtual private network. Essentially, a VPN makes an encrypted connection from your computer to another computer somewhere else in the world. So all of your internet activity appears as if it's going through the computer that you're connected to and not yours. 
and from your ISP's perspective, your internet activity just looks like a bunch of jumbled encrypted mess. A good VPN will cost you a monthly fee, but a decent free alternative is called CyberGhost. The internet is the greatest technological breakthrough of this age, but it can come with a price. There's so many free services online because the currency has become our information, our identity. Sometimes it's worth the trade-off, but if you don't think it is, take back control of it and use these steps to protect yourself. Click here to visit our last week's video, and if you want more, please consider subscribing and be sure to check out our Google+, Facebook, and Twitter pages. Alright, until next time, hack to learn. Don't learn to hack.